So you want to get to the 75th Ranger Regiment. Got to go through RASP. Let's go. 12. RASP is not just a place to knock soldiers down and see who gets back up. Between physical fitness and teamwork tests, the instructors start to instill the fundamentals of direct action combat. If you make it into the 75th, you will be in close contact with enemy forces. This class right now, when they graduate here in about uh, six weeks, uh, they can be in combat in as early as two to three weeks after they go, they go to the unit. Some might deploy even sooner than that. I mean, they'll get to their wow. unit, they can be on a plane uh, the following week uh, going off to uh, combat. So uh, it's, it's extremely real. Everybody understand that? The instructors have all come straight from war zones where they engage the enemy daily. How many cadre here you think have never been in combat? None, sir. None. How many cadre here you think has been real firefights against real enemies? All of them, sir. Whatever we tell you, it's because we had real target feedback overseas. Be adaptive. Be adaptive. I don't need a robot out here. It just gets up, moves, gets down, screw it. I want a guy who has violence of action and can deliver some death. Are we good? That's the kind of cadre staff you want. All these guys now, the Rangers, the Marine Corps, they have combat experience. That's the instructors they're picking. So you're getting the best of the best to teach you what they know from the real combat, real life situations. Strike Force size makes the 75th Ranger Regiment unique. Most special operations forces rely on teams of 10 to 12 men working alone. But the Rangers can deploy hundreds of elite soldiers on a single raid. The ability to strike with overwhelming force enables Rangers to take over large targets such as airfields or heavily defended compounds. Run, not an option. Learning the airtight coordination necessary for such raids starts at RASP. Got that was the original intention of the Rangers, was secure an airfield, which is a very critical target. But as you guys have seen the last two decades, They've been in so many tier one missions, direct action stuff. They've got a very impressive resume. Two minutes to be in the order of movement. After detailed instruction, this 12 man squad is given the basic task of assaulting a bunker. You're wide out in the open. You better move quick. You guys just gotta stand up, walk and shoot at a <laughs> bunker? It used to be, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. It was a cadence you said, so you didn't get shot at a minimum. These guys are pretty green from the looks of this. Are you crazy? <laughs> There's no fog of war today. They face an open field right in broad daylight with no return fire. Yeah, you're dead. But for novices, you're dead. it's no easy task. They must keep track of every other soldier's yeah. movements to prevent casualties by friendly fire. They're going to start realizing, okay, I'm being shot at right now. I need to be able to defeat that enemy force before he gets me first. And, uh, and they start really learning about how to work as a team. The instructor spots soldiers in the rear, firing directly into the men in front. What in the hell? He designates the front soldiers as killed in action. You, you, you're dead. Yeah, you're dead. You're both dead. Die. With no awareness of who's moving where, it doesn't take long for the entire yeah. assault team to get taken out. Dead. You're dead. It's all gonna assault this bunker. Only the machine gun is left to complete the mission. I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. There he goes. He advances on the bunker in perfect form. But he makes one critical mistake. Just as he reaches ammo, the enemy like. bunker, he runs out of ammo. Come on, buddy. What happened? Out of ammo, Sar. Why are you out of ammo? Cover my buddy too much, Sar. You just left him up there by himself. Well, you stayed back there and shot right past him. He was in front of the bunker. You were still shooting at the bunker, weren't you? Oh, it's it's only you have to have a control rate of fire and some ammo awareness. This is training. Obviously, these guys will learn. But there's a reason they say stay online in training. You can't have guys in front of you and you're sending rounds down range. That's definitely a rookie mistake these guys will learn from in training. Only failure, I think, if if you don't learn from it, you got to get up, dust yourself off, and say, you know what, that was a learning experience. Yeah, private. Let's uh, let's move forward and, and try this again. Razor sharp synchronization is central to the 75th's mission. The regiment keeps one battalion on high alert at all times. Rangers take pride in the fact that they can be on the ground anywhere, 
in 18 hours or less, often a lot less. The key to response time is the airborne operation. 106 men load up on a C-17 for their first jump with the regiment. Go, go, go! They're about to find out. They're jumping out of the pan and into the fire. It's week four Announcer of drama queen. The 106 remaining candidates literally hit the ground running. They're headed straight for an obstacle course designed to get their heart rates up. You guys can run faster than that. Come on. Candidates David Porter and Andrew Robertson go first. Make no effort, boy. Two weeks, My lord. They've trained as Ranger first responders. It's finally time to put their training to the test. Suddenly, they confront a soldier posing as a badly injured ranger. Ah, ah, pressure on it. Ah, pressure on his feet. Ah, <laughs> Turn kits on. Uh, we've got to move 200 meters into the wood line. Let's go. Okay. Hurry up. Never appreciate how heavy someone is until they're dead weight. In these type of training scenarios, one guy that's 170 pounds plus his gear comes a real burden. The team has 10 minutes to get the wounded man past all obstacles to the medevac site while performing life-saving procedures. We're putting them through the, the obstacle course before they do it, so their heart, heart's going to be racing just like they infilled on a target. It just gives them the, the insight, the practice of before I actually do it in combat on a real live casualty. I've done it in a stressful situation. They know they're getting graded and they know they're getting critiqued. Porter and Robertson fumble with the IV meal. What are you doing? My lord. Uh, you got one minute. Throw everything back. We need that. We have 40, 30 seconds. Go. 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 Five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Stop. One, two, three, down. We didn't get a blood pressure. That's not important. Consumed with the medical procedures, Porter left his weapon behind. Why would you do that? I yeah. stepped away from my lord. The patient. I should have brought it with me. Sorry. Kneel on it so it gets annoying on your knee and you know it's there. Roger, That's something you don't want to lose. Most of this training is common sense stuff. You just got to slow yourself down and think through the steps they've told you. Can't leave your weapon, can't leave the wounded comrade, and you got to get to the bird. They're about to get more practice whether they like it or not. Their platoon heads out on patrol, and they're hit with wave after wave of ambushes for almost 16 hours. They power through to the finish. Now, they've completed phase one of RASP. Stop! 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 You guys failed this task miserably. Thank you very much for your service, but you might not be needed any longer. But I'll tell you what, we'll let you go on to phase two just for to make sure we don't need you. 106 out of the original 114 soldiers are still struggling through the RASP course. Not a single one of them knows where he stands. There's always that, where am I? Do they have a little secret list in the background or something like that? You know, I mean, you just never know. I mean, I know everybody, everybody's feeling the same way, whether they want to say it or not. You know, nobody's been officially selected yet. Phase two of RASP teaches the specific skills of a special operations ranger, such as working in the dark. And the guys are outstanding, and the guys that suck stand out. The gray man in the middle, they might not even know your name, Harley, because you're not making yourself an outlier. 95% of the combat raids conducted by the 75th Regiment happen at night. Teams must move under live fire through complex structures to capture an enemy. Night raids are extremely dangerous, but with night vision technology, Darkness actually gives the Rangers an edge. Go, go, go! Week five of RASP. To get the candidates used to working in the dark, each man is equipped with state-of-the-art night vision optics. A lot of the missions to do at night, you have to be able to function completely under night vision devices. You, don't, you can't use any kind of lights on the seas, because then your enemy knows where you're at. 5.50. 5.70. 5.0. Light two. Big dog. Come on a correction. 
correction. Even with infrared lights, he's unable to see and work the radio. Southern 5.50. Fire. Next one. Time is wasted. Next one. You, you, call one now. Hurry up. Ashner is immediately replaced by another student. Let's stop this big dog. Line one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Break. He works through it. Medevac is on the way. Now, they've taught these guys what to do. A lot of people sit there and doze off in the classroom stuff. Next thing you know, you got to do it. That's why it's so important you pay attention to the knowledge side of these training programs. The helicopters evacuate the wounded. By now, every candidate has made mistakes, and no one knows if they'll make Ranger or not. There are only two weeks of testing left at last. It's time for live ammo and live explosives. Make one wrong good move stuff. now, go, go. and you're done for. Week six of RASP is spent on the shooting range, making sure every ranger is a master of his weapons. Here, they quickly learn the skills of advanced shooting. But being a good shot won't matter if they can't get to the enemy. Rangers have to be able to remove any barriers between themselves and their target. Week seven of RASP is spent learning how to get through any obstacle. Or a bigger, more robust material that you're gonna have to come up against. It's the final days of the course and the final chance to prove themselves. Getting close to the end, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. But then you just never know every day, you know, when you're dealing with weapons and things like that, you can have a, a negligent discharge or something like that and, and you're done. And the Rangers always need to consider who or what's on the other side to protect nearby civilians. You end up seeing rubber flying out. In reality, would be projectile and frag going into someone's house. We give these guys the tools and the techniques that they need to go through, conduct that breacher's assessment, and not necessarily go up and put a ton of charges on the door and blow it up. Anybody can do that. It's definitely an art, and their life can depend on if that door opens or not. At the same time, Cadre always keeps on reminding us, you know, not to get complacent. We're dealing with explosives, still dealing with live fire, and uh, you know, we're just trying to keep our, our, our uh, you know head straight and make sure we, we get out of here safely. After a week of practice, it's do or die. The men are briefed on their final breaching exam. It's going to be a no-look situation, so you won't be able to see the door that you're breaching. You guys aren't going to know what you're coming up to, so it's your job to determine what type of tool to be used and to use it correctly. You understand? The first squad prepares an assortment of breaching tools. Just as in combat, they have no idea what they're about to confront. They have to break through all the barriers safely and hit the finish line in under 16 minutes. Speed is critical, but one safety violation here, and you could fail the entire course after eight weeks of hell. Set. Begin. After a thousand yard run, they hit the first door. First door, first breacher. Let's go. Dogger, go. Candidate Mario Banalis is first in. Banalis assesses the door and goes for a ram breach. Fast and effective. Next door now. This is where the teamwork comes into play. You may think you're going to do it one way. Your teammates say, hey, this is a better way. So everybody's got to listen and stay calm because the last thing you want to do is use the wrong method to get entry. Next breacher, we back to the Metal door outward swinging. David Porter is up next. His door is more complicated, but he knows immediately what to use. A crowbar does the trick. All right, let's go, man. Move to Sergeant Tyler. Soon the doors get more challenging. Shot, shot. The next door is metal with a beefy lock. Candidate Marcus Rogers moves in with a hydraulic ram. A powerful tool that's also virtually silent. My butter. As stress mounts, the targets get still tougher. Guys are doing good. Place them into carry configuration. Time to bust out the ballistic shotgun. Use when padlocks are present and speed is critical. All right, move with me. Hey, get the there. Hurry up, Emerson. All 
All right, listen up, man. You've got 30 seconds to complete three shots. A combination of steel bars and metal sheeting requires multiple tools and teamwork. Porter cuts with a thermal torque while his teammate hits the rebar. <laughs> never the done this saw. one. He's toting that saw. The Broco torch, it's a magnesium rod that burn up to 10,000 degrees, and it burns through steel just like butter. Oh, your rod's done. Let's go. Like that. One final door to bust through with explosives, and there's less than three minutes on the clock. All right, go ahead and place your charge. Guys got this. Finally, it's a mad dash to the finish line. Fifteen oh seven with penalties. Porter and Benalla's squad finishes just in time. For them, seven weeks of relentless training and testing is over. That looked pretty smooth after the debacle trying to get to that machine gun nest. Very soon, they'll learn if their dreams of becoming rangers will come true or not. Week 8. It's time to find out who proved themselves special operations worthy. We're very careful about who it is that we select to come into this organization. These guys go through a very rigorous process to make sure that they are everything we need them to be. Over the last four days, candidates on the bubble faced a hearing by a review board to decide their fate. In all, 23 soldiers did not get selected. And that's the best thing for them and best thing for the unit. You don't want a guy who doesn't meet the standard. They're just dangerous and they're going to become bitter anyway. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. For my current subscribers, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching.